Good thing. I'm in. I'm in. All right. All right, Brother Tony, will you pray for us? We'll start. If we're in ministry or we're a plumber, we uh, should do shaved ice or, or whatever we do, our vocation does not matter. We are all, as believers, called to be holy. Uh, the Lord calls us to that. And uh, now that's a high standard. Um, that is a high standard that, that not many of us want to, uh, want to pursue. And so we're going to talk this morning uh, about that pursuit of holiness. But, but why is that pursuit of holiness so difficult? Well, we all know the answer is, is even though we're saved, even though we're justified, so we're on, we're on this side of the cross. We've been justified uh, through the redemptive work of Jesus on the cross. And so because of his blood, we're justified from our sins. So we've gotten that part taken care of. I hope everybody has gotten that part taken care of. But, but we, we still have a, a process of sanctification. We still have to keep working. Why? Because while we have, have, have been taken out of the bondage of sin, we... We still have this flesh we deal with, right? Every single day we wake up and we deal with it. And if we don't, it will deal with us. And, and we see an example um, here in, in Romans 6, and, and this is something I have, I have preached and, and, uh, and, and people get tired of me saying it. But when, when anytime you read Scripture, context is the key. God, I always got to know what was said before, what was said after, and who's it talking to, uh, what does it mean. So as we get here in Romans 6, we've seen in Romans 5, uh, the, the, the idea that, that being under the law has passed because now we're under grace. So, so keep that in mind as we begin to read in chapter 6, the struggle with our flesh, the struggle with sin, and what is our response now that we're under grace, what is our response to be? Verse number 1, chapter 6 in Romans says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? I love the response. God forbid how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein so so we see right off that, that, that the idea that because we're under grace that sin is okay that we can we can continue in it because we do have grace now uh, is no that that's rejected uh, all the way so 
he, he says, uh, jumping down to verse 5, For we have been planted together in the likeness of his death. We are also in the likeness of his resurrection. And I'll be skipping around, Jason. So I told you all of it. We'll, we'll skip a few verses. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. So, so we're, we're not serving sin um, because we are under grace. Jesus has paid for that. So we're no longer, if you, if you can get, get in your mind, um, uh, you know, even, even Paul here, uh, being shackled in prison, and we're no longer shackled to sin, it does not mean we don't have to, have to battle it. We don't have to, have to fight our flesh. So we're no, no longer under this dominion, but we do have to be aware of it. For uh, in verse uh, number 8, Now if we be dead with Christ, we shall believe, we shall, we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more, death had no more dominion over him. So we in the same, we are, we, we're not being uh, dominated, and the dominion, sin doesn't have dominion over us anymore. Verse ten, down to verse 12, let not sin therefore reign. That word reign means to be king, basically. In your mortal, so let, let not sin therefore be king in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield your members of, as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God, as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Verse 14, for, shall, uh, for sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. So we've established that, that, that we are not under the law. We're under grace, but, but we're still, uh, like we see in verse 12, that, that even though we're not under that dominion, um, we still have to make sure that sin is not king in our body. So verse 15, what, uh, what then shall we sin? Uh, because we are not under the law, but under grace. Once again, that response, God forbid. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourself servants to obey his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness? So what, whatever we decide to, 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 to give ourselves to, that's, that's who we're going to serve. Verse 17, But God be thanked that ye were servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered to you. Being made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members servants to uncleanness and to iniquity, unto iniquity, even so now yield your members servants to righteousness unto holiness. There's that word. For when you, uh, for when you were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye in those things whereof ye now are ashamed? For the end of those things, being under sin, serving sin, serving ourselves, serving our flesh, the end of those things is death. Verse 22, But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. So we, we, we have death under sin and everlasting life unto holiness. And we all know verse 23, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So we, we see the framework of the battle with sin uh, in Romans 6. So to get a proper perspective of, of, of holiness and the need for it is, is we do have to battle with sin, but our call to holiness, as, as we see in First Peter and so many other times, even here in Romans 6, is that we have a call to holiness. Now, how do we, how do we know in what we know that we, we, we're certainly not under the law, we're under grace, but we still have to, have to confront sin? What do we do when we're confronted with sin? How, how, do we, how do we respond? Well, I'm glad you asked. Um, there's, there's a term the Bible uses in, in several different scriptures. We'll, we'll, we'll m mention them briefly. Um, but the word is flee. And, and I'm not talking about what's on your dog and cats. But, but literally, F-L-E-E -E means to, 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 to get out of somewhere quickly, to, to, to go somewhere fast. Uh, and, and, and even big folks like me can go somewhere fast if they really want to. If something's chasing me that's bigger than me, I'm going to go somewhere fast. And I only, I only need to be faster than the slowest person around me. So uh, that, that's, that's my motivation. But, but we're, we're told to flee things in response uh, to our pursuit of holiness. In 1 Corinthians 6, 18, we're, we're told to flee fornication. In 1 Corinthians 10, 14, uh, we're told to flee idolatry. In 1 Timothy 6, 
11, we're, we're told to flee these things. These things mentioned in the verses before was material gain, is riches and stuff and, and, and just what we can gather here on earth. We're told to flee those things. In 2 Timothy 2.22, we're told to flee youthful lust. Uh, now, I know you, some of you may not be feel youthful in here, may not think you can, you can uh, identify with what youthful is, but, but, but we can. It's, it, it's anything that, that God would not have us uh, to be a part of. He says to flee all those things. So how do we flee? The image I get in my mind every time I hear and read one of these scriptures that says flee is taken back to Genesis 39. Remember Joshua, not Joshua, he wasn't there. Joseph was in Potiphar's house and uh, Potiphar's wife trying to seduce him. And what was, what was Joseph's response to that? Uh, he was confronted with sin. He, temptations that he's confronted with something that would attack God's glory and affect his holiness. And what did he do? He, he, he fleed. Uh, that, ain't, that ain't proper English, but that's exactly what he did. That's what I get in my mind. Flee, uh, so much so that he ran right out of his coat. He left his coat behind. He said, I'm confronted with something that I know God does not want to be a part of, and I'm going to get out of here. And that's the exact picture that I get every time I read anything that the Bible tells us to flee. Is that anything with sin, that, that's got to be our response. It is, is we can't hang around it. We hang around. Because I promise you, had Joshua hung around, had he, had he, had he, had he kind of uh, knocked it out of gear and just kind of been coasting, had he not been pursuing holiness in his life. And listen, anybody up to that point, and, and even after that, 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 that could have had some reasoning in his mind to, to knock it out of gear. Hey, look, I've been through enough. It would have been Joshua. But, but what, what, Joseph, see, I keep saying Joshua. Joseph, he, he, it, it would have been him. But he didn't. He, his, his commitment to the Lord was the same. And his pursuit for holiness was the same. And that's why his response was what it was. And when we find ourselves in trouble, we, we, we look back and say, you know what? I wasn't, I wasn't where I was supposed to be. That's how I didn't respond how I was supposed to respond. We have to flee and, and get out of there. So those are all examples of how we can flee when confronted with sin, temptation, so that that, that pursuit of holiness is something that we can really see in our life. And again, that is a call on life. No matter who we are, what we do, we are called to holiness. But if you look uh, at just one, one quick verse in James 4, 7, I know we've all heard it. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So, so we saw some examples of how we flee, but, but here's an example of how we can make the devil flee. And, and so his response would be the same from us. Not because of our power, not because of anything we bring to the table, but, but how do we resist the devil? We oppose him. Well, here's, and, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to touch on this, and some of y'all may get mad at me because you may have your bracelet on or something like that. But there was a, there was a term, a phrase coined uh, in the 80s, 90s, uh, maybe in the 70s, I don't know. You have to ask somebody that's older than me. Uh, but WWJD, what would Jesus do? In and of itself, I got no problem with that that phrase. But what it does, I think it downplays some of the responsibility for us. Uh, what would Jesus do? Because here's the here's the only the, the struggle with that that phrase is it is impossible to know what Jesus would do if we don't know what Jesus did. And the only way we know what Jesus did is we read His Word, and we 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 find that that He gives us. Uh, in the book of Ephesians, he gives us an armor to put on. And, and, and what is the only offensive weapon he gives us? All the other things are defense. All the other things are to protect us. But what is the offensive weapon he gives? This word. So if we are, this is our, our sword, you know. Uh, we gotta, we got we to gotta, we gotta have that sword with us. Uh, and listen, hey, just like you wouldn't want a police officer to, uh, to, to walk up into your house and, and you've called 911, somebody's broken your house, and, and you know that he's never really practiced with his service pistol, but he'll come in there and, and try to shoot the bad guy in your house. I, I don't want that guy walking in my house because he's probably shoot me or himself or both of us, you know, and not the bad guy. So, so you you got you to gotta know your weapon. you got to know your weapon. I mean, you can't, you get, you got to keep that weapon clean. You can't, you can't let it get dirty. Uh, and and you got to use it. you got to practice with it. So... <laughs> yeah, 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 uh, Lance Shooter. The, uh, but this is our sword, and this is what we have 
to, to go on the fence with. So to resist the devil, to oppose him, we have to look at the example. Hey, what did Jesus do when Jesus was confronted with temptation from Satan? When, when, when old Slewfoot came in, in the wilderness, when Jesus was at his most vulnerable uh, uh, stage, I, I feel like, in, in, in the wilderness there, uh, three times Satan tempted him. And what did Jesus do every single time? He quoted scripture. He, he, he whipped out the sword. And listen, if, if, if that is the model that the Son of God used, that is the model that we have to use. You know, Jesus was pursuing holiness. If I, in our pursuit of holiness, this is what we've got to go to. But we've got to be familiar with it. We've got to know it. We've got to, we've got to use it. Because that's how we can actually cause the devil to flee from us, to, 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 to tear out of town, uh, if you will, is, is we've got to be uh, able to oppose him, and just like Jesus did, to, to do that with the, the sword. And then, of course, the spirit that lives inside of us. I, 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 I've been discouraged uh, so many times when, when I hear, and even, even uh, preachers and teachers, um, not necessarily here, but we get this idea that sin is just something we're just gonna we're just gonna deal with. It's just I'm just gonna it's just gonna happen. I'm I'm just gonna do it. I'm just gonna sin. I, it, I mean, I, you know, you, you already said we, we have to battle the flesh, and and the flesh is sinful. So I'm just gonna sin. That's just the that's just the the, the reality. The the only problem with with that is, or not the only, but the, the greatest problem with that with that that way of thinking, and and one it'll affect our holiness in a great way, is if we say that, then we say this the, the same power that lives in us, the Holy Spirit. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead lives in us, can't overcome our sin, can't give us ways to combat sin, can't protect us from that. And, and, and to think about that, the, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead can't, can't help me uh, not lie, not steal, not, not look what I shouldn't look at, not say what I shouldn't say. And so what we do is we, is we, we kind of we let Satan kind of creep in and, and, and get us used to stuff. And so we just kind of, you know, watching that don't bother me. Listening to that don't bother me. Going there don't bother me. Doing this doesn't bother me. Well, if, if, if the spirit that lives inside of us and the power that that contains rose Jesus from the dead, I promise you if we're pursuing holiness, that's going to bother us. It's going it's gonna, it's gonna to cause us to, 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 check, to check some things. So what happens is when we, when we kind of knock it out of gear, per se, and we, we're just kind of coasting, you know, we, we feel like, you know, hey, I've been going to church long enough. I, I've been, I've been doing, I'm, I'm, I'm involved in this program. I, I, I'm coming to Sunday school, which most folks aren't. Um, I'm, I'm tithing, which most folks aren't. I'm, I'm, I'm helping out here and there and doing this and that, and all those things are well and good. But when we get that mentality that we're doing enough, and, and we can just kind of knock it out of gear and, and, and just kind of pursue our lives uh, while not pursuing holiness. Um, I promise you that's when we're going to find ourselves in a position to fall and to fail. Uh, if we are really aware that, yeah, we're no longer under the law, we're under grace, but, but there's a great responsibility. Because, see, that's not cheap grace. And so when, when, when we kind of pacify sin and we just we say, well, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm going to sin and, and hey, Jesus, forgive me. Hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you how free I am in Christ. I'm going to go do whatever I want to do, and all i got to do is ask Jesus to forgive me. I wish I had thought about it, but I read this week, um, and some of y'all may, may uh, be familiar with it. It was one of those, uh, one of those shows, uh, a Bachelorette, or yeah, one of those type shows, which is crazy. Anyway, right, sorry, I'm, I know I made some of y'all mad. But the, the girl, um, in response to question asked talked about uh, uh, look hey I, I, I'm, I'm a Christian I can do whatever I want to do and, I, and Jesus is still going to forgive me I can do whatever I want to do and Jesus is still going to forgive me well I, I promise you he will forgive you if you're faithful because he's faithful and just to do that if we, we come to him but, but there's consequences for that hey listen I, 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 hate, I hate to be so blunt but uh, I mean listen if you if you you and somebody else uh, um, know each other, uh, and you forget, ask God to forgive you of that. Jesus forgive you of it, but nine months later, you might have something that comes along. Okay, there's consequences for our sin. While Jesus has forgiven us, sure. Does He love us uh, the same? Sure. 
But are, are, our, are our lives going to be different because of it? Sure. So that's why our pursuit for holiness is so important because God knows what's best for us. He knows that, look, these are not, these are not, um, this is not a boundary that he's keeping us in so, so we don't have fun. These are things he's keeping in so, so he keeps us safe. He, he knows that, that, that we don't need this in our life. He knows that we can't handle that in our life. And so, so God has put things in our place to, to keep us safe. But, but the, the idea is that we've we got to learn to flee a little better in the Western church, I think. Uh, we, 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 we got it real easy here in America, in the church. Uh, we, we, don't, we don't have any persecution. And so we, we, we kind of, that, that culture of Christianity of just being real passive with sin and being, being real just, you know, how I'll get right up to it and think that it's not going to get on me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to slide over and sit right by it and think that, that, that it's not going to rub off. Well, that, that, that's not true. We've we got to learn to flee those things. When we hang around, we wind up like David did with Bathsheba. He was, he was where he was, wasn't supposed to be when he wasn't supposed to be there. And he hung around. And, and what happened? Uh, it, 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 cost, it cost some people their life. And, and it cost David severely. So... Uh, what did what did Jesus do when he was tempted by Satan? Is he went to the Word? When 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 we're combated uh, with what the enemy uh, wants to destroy us with, we have to have to have to go on the offense. And the only offense is is, is this. The only offense is the Word. We gotta we gotta go to those truths. God, I, I know what you said in James four seven. If I resist the devil, that he's gonna flee from me. So so that's what I'm doing right now. I'm gonna I'm gonna pray. I'm gonna go read my Bible. You know. In my short 35 years of life, when and, and I had had most of it, um, I never found myself getting entangled with sin when I was engaged in spiritual things. When I was engaged in prayer, when I was, I mean, I, never have I been praying, never have I been in God's Word, never have I, have I been so uh, in, in, in pursuit of, of, of holiness uh, through uh, the, the standard that God gives us, have, have I find, found myself being entangled with sin. It, it, it's just not compatible. That, that, that fruit ain't going to come from that tree. But, it, but it's, when I've, it's when I've allowed those things to get lax, when I've, when I've, when I've gotten away from those things, that's when, that's when we get entangled. That's when we get uh, distracted. And that's when, uh, just like those lions in the Serengeti, uh, they, they're not going after the biggest, baddest wildebeest, the, the fattest, uh, strongest, Antelope. If it, can you even be a fat antelope? I don't know. I would be if I was antelope. But that ain't, that ain't what they're going after. They're not going after the strongest, meanest, toughest warriors out there. They're going for the ones hanging in the back, the weak ones, the ones that are, that are, that are not paying attention, then they got distracted, then they got away from the pack, and all of a sudden, boom. Seeking, he walks around. The Bible, the Bible says he walks around seeking whom he may devour. So, we, we have to know that about him, but here's what else we've got to know about him. I, I, I want to close with this. Is, and, and I've had a discussion with this uh, with uh, some folks here recently about this very same thing. So many times I think we give Satan way too much credit. Oh, we give him way, some, way too much credit. We, we, we attribute uh, the failures in our life to say, oh, he just, I just, Satan, he, he got me. He got me. Well, well, Satan don't know everything. Satan can't be everywhere. And, and so, so, so here's the reality of it. Again, I'm going I'm to give you what the experience in my life, and, I, and I'm pretty sure it will translate to yours, is, is most of the time when I wind up failing, God is not because of Satan. It's because of my own disobedience. Now, now are, are there things that Satan would have put in our way to trip us up? Sure. But, but, but it wasn't like Satan's walking around with that big old pitchfork and he done shoved me in the sin. See, that's too often we get that idea. But that's not it. It's my disobedience. I chose to disobey. I knew what I was doing. But, but, but I, hey, listen, when, when, when Dale is left to his own standard, hey, there's a lot of things I'll do. There's a lot of things I'll say. There's, there's a lot of places I'll go. A lot of things I'll do. But, but when, I, when I align myself up with the Holy Spirit that lives inside of me and let, let, let Him be the standard and, and, and God's Word be the standard for my life, man, it, it feels so much better because that ain't up to me no more. 
I can't, I can't slip when I'm, when I'm not holding on to myself and I'm letting somebody else hold on to me. I, I, it's out of my control because I can't control it. Is, is that's where we got to live. We got to, we got to learn to flee. Uh, we, we got, we got to see what Jesus did, and we got to go on the offense. But um, holiness is such a, is such a vital part. And I heard, um, and once again, I'm terrible at remembering who said things. So I'm generalizing. Uh, I'm giving credit to whomever this was. Um, and, and they said it about a pastor, but I think you throw your vocation or your where you are in your life, and it still applies. But he said, the the greatest thing you can do as a pastor for your church is your own personal holiness. The greatest gift you can give your church as a pastor is your personal holiness. The greatest thing you can give your family as a husband, as a wife, as a father, as a mother, as a, as a, uh, your your employer, as a worker, uh, just fill in the blank. The greatest thing you can give any of those people, any of those situations is your personal holiness. It's my personal holiness. When we pursue that, uh, people on our job see it. People on our family see it. Uh, our church is different, and uh, and I think if, if we if we get our minds geared towards uh, what the Bible says about holiness and, and how it, it's called on life, no matter who we are, is it's, it's a tough standard. Listen, it is so tough. That's why so many people don't do it. So so many people just kind of, you know what? Hey, that's, that's oh well, look at our holy roller. No, what it is is you're ashamed that somebody can is actually attempting to live by the Spirit and not do the things you just pacify. Is you're just you're just saying, I want to continue in my sin because it, I like it better than I like Jesus. And that's where we find ourselves off. Is when we desire things more than we desire Jesus. That's what that's when we mess up. So when we're pursuing holiness, man, he's he's we we know there's a shadow of a doubt. He's all we want, he's all we need, he's all we got, and and, and, and that, that's it. And when, when when we stop that, when we kind of get away from that that idea in our life, then, uh, then some of those things kind of look like they're going to help us. They're going to make us happy. They're going to make us feel good. And they might for just a little bit. But in, in, in the end, they're going to cause destruction. So uh, let's, uh, let's, let's, let's see what the Bible says and, and take that pursuit for holiness as a, as a charge for our life because God has called us to it. And uh, I promise you this church will be different. Your family will be different. My family will be different. Our, our work will be different. And, uh, and God will get the glory because... In the end, folks gonna know. Right? No, you say you say so and so is doing that. No, he yeah, give, give it give it two months. He'll be back. People will be back doing. She'll she'll be back doing right what she was doing before. <laughs> and the two months come along. I mean, it's just uh, fully, give, give give him another two months. The two months come along. That's something different about them. That's that, that's something that, that ain't the same person I knew before. And I'm not even talking about salvation. I'm just talking about you know, just hey, hey, going all in, you know. And uh, it's it's a tough life. Jesus said it'll be tough. Hey, when when, when Jesus was healing a bunch of folks and he's walking around, you know, just boom, boom, miracle here, miracle there, like Oprah, miracles, miracles, miracles. You know, there was things going everywhere. He's hey, that was a big old crowd. When he started talking about how tough it was to to walk that line, to to, to live that life. Hey, that that, that this is a, a tough road. Boom, 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 boom. Boom. He looked around. He even said, this son, what, what, are you going to leave me too? Are you gonna, is this, does this offend you? Are you going to leave? So we got, we got to know it's a tough road. Boy, I tell you what, it is so fulfilling to know that, um, that my life is not my own. And every day I wake up that I rely on him, that I got to rely on me. Because I'm going to fail me. I'm going to fail you. I'm going to fail my family. Well, when it ain't me, it's all good. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for your goodness. God, folks, thank you so much for your love. God, I thank you for, God, the truth we find in your word. God, that uh, you give us uh, the, the formula for success. Uh, God, to live that victorious Christian life. God, not, to, not so we can walk around braggadocious and say, hey, I'm living in victory. God, but just because victory is just a byproduct of holiness. God, we, we can't help but be victorious, God, because it's not ours, it's yours. God, we can't help but, but live a life, God, that, that isn't always easy. God, that, 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 that's, that's going to have its share of, of difficulty and, and struggle. God, but when we, when we pursue you, when we pursue holiness that you've called us to, God, there's a, there's a whole other level, God, that you allow us to live on. And God, a, a place that you allow us to be, um, God, that, uh, that, that's just quite frankly, it's, just, it's not many Christians 
desire. God, I pray to help that desire be so burned so deep in our hearts. God, not so we can get recognition by those around us, God, but so you can get glory. God, because that is the aim of our life, is God, to give you glory. And God, I pray that you get glory this morning. Uh, God, I pray to, uh, as, we, as we move upstairs, God, that, that the worship we've experienced all week individually, God, will corporately come together and just be a sweet Savior in your, in your nostrils. God, we love you. God, we praise you. God, we thank you for how, how awesome that you love us. God, even when we're unlovable, even when we were in sin, God, you loved us. God, thank you. God, we offer our praise to you this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you all very much.